And oddly enough, I'm continuing this series with a car that I don't own, but it's down here and it's as good as, you know, it's the same sort of deal as my own vehicle. So this is a 2002 Lamborghini Murcielago. Uh, what makes this car special? Uh, well, it does have a past celebrity owner, although the celebrity owner was a porn star. This was Jenna Jameson's car. Um, the thing that really does make this car special is the six-speed gated manual transmission. The vast majority of Murcielagos, and there weren't many to begin with, were sold with a six-speed e-gear transmission, which is a single-clutch automated paddle shift transmission, which, in my opinion, is garbage. The six-speed transmission in this is internally identical to the e-gear, but it doesn't have the uh, control gear on it that uh, is just kind of slow, clunky, and fails. We bought this car. It's actually owned by my oldest sibling and my father um, because, kind of a long story short, they were shopping for an exotic, but they were looking at kind of first, second year Gallardos, uh, often with the e-gear. Um, and I warned them, unfortunately, the first couple of years of Gallardo, up until 2010, with the five liter engine are not good. Um, they have massive, massive engine problems, timing chain issues, things like that. And the E-Gear requires really sophisticated tools, even to do minor things like changing out a clutch, which on an Italian car, believe it or not, is something you do about every 7,000 to 9,000 miles. Why exactly that is, I'm not entirely sure. We haven't had any issues with this one yet. It does have a Kevlar aftermarket clutch in it already. Um, but I'm like, if you're going to be spending that kind of money, why not spend double that, essentially, and buy a car that's actually desirable and actually on its way up in value? So we got this thing out of New York. Um, not really going to divulge what we paid for it, but a good deal. Um, the provenance with it isn't really anything we care about, but it's, you know, a desirable color. It's a first year. Uh, it's got the 6.2 liter, I think 585 horsepower V12. This car excuse me, has a fab speed exhaust on it, so it sounds just epic. Unfortunately, at some point in time, somebody put these new tech, fairly high quality, flow formed, forged wheels, and terrible tires on this car. But they did come with the factory wheels at least, although they were powder coated gloss black. So I've had these redone now, and I'm just waiting now for uh, valve stem stuff. They actually thread into one of the wheel bolt holes. If you've been following Oval Bore, you will know all about that plate and the $327 Lamborghini wants for each one of my two missing ones. Um, but yeah, it's got vinyl wrap on the bottom here, which I'm going to undo, and hopefully the paint is good underneath it. The wheels need to go, and then it also has some translucent dark smoke vinyl on the taillights, which I will be removing as well. That vanity plate, though. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna do a couple things around the garage here and then I will cold start it and take it for a quick drive because I haven't actually uh, shown you guys much about this car yet. And it's it's pretty cool. The fact that this is just sitting in here is kind of ridiculous. So there is the 6.2 liter Bizzarini um, V12 engine, four throttle bodies, Bosch electronic fuel injection, uh, direct electric ignition. The really cool stuff about this engine, all the accessory belt drive is on the transmission side. I don't know how they do that yet, because I haven't had it up in the air, but that's a really, really cool feature, um, and better than the F355, certainly in that sense. Looks like it's got some water spots on it, so I may have to go wash it as well. It's been a couple days. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take it for a quick spin, and I'll take you guys along. Future plans for this car, honestly, just make it stock and enjoy it. Um, I, I do hope that this is a long-term hold for them. I really don't want to see this car flipped. Uh, eventually someday, I'm sure it'll be worth big money, you know, akin to Countach and things like that, but it's, it's just so streetable. If you don't need to uh, reverse into a tight area or make an emergency lane change without knowing exactly what's by you, it's actually pretty easy to drive. The shifter feels a lot like any R8. It does not feel at all like the Ferrari. Uh, the power delivery is we'll say aggressive and right now unfortunately the heater control panel has the heat jammed on full so at some point i will look at this car a little more in depth and try to figure out exactly what is going on with i'm guessing a stuck heater solenoid 
but uh, it, it's just a car. That's what I tell everyone, especially after I did that 355 Ferrari engine out video series. And they're like, oh, why do you even do this? I'm like, it's just a car. You know, that, that service took me three days and I'm a fairly competent wrench with good tools, but that's all it was. So let me tidy up a few things here and we'll get going in this thing. This car is not a particularly dignified beast to get into. Um, so on most 90s and 2000s exotic cars, you've got a regular cut key. You have one of these little fob boxes. So Ferrari, Porsche, Lamborghini. Um, these are immobilizers and they're for your keyless. And then of course you can have a tacky keychain if you want. So the start procedure, key in, clutch in, turn to start, hit the button once on the fob. And off she goes. And of course it's got the Italian handbrake. So you lift up, push the button in, and then back down. She's very heavy handed. It does have power steering, but it has enormous tires, so... I'm gonna build up and we'll get out of here. So it runs pretty well. It's a little bit loud, but this thing is honestly a very civilized car, I have to say. Other than getting nine miles to the gallon and you getting driven by like idiots all the time, it's, it's pretty good. Like I said, it actually drives pretty sedately. It's, it's got good manners. The steering is pretty easy. The shifter is heavy, but not bad. The clutch is actually pretty okay. The box is actually lovely. It doesn't fight you at all. Not like what you'd expect looking at uh, a giant V12 manual transmission. This is a lovely car, and uh, the view you get out of the mirrors is pretty ridiculous. It sure does sound nice, though.